another one, for example, urban gardening community. Is it possible in this? Yes. Okay, so can we also develop different technology for each pilot? So yes. we will have an app for the cyclists and an app for the urban gardening. Yes. Yes, it is possible. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Technology is not what's going to get your proposal accepted or failed. What it is, is having an engaged community with a problem to solve, which this, this application or technology or exchange uh, helps to solve. So people are better off as a result of it. I have uh, four questions, so I, I do the first and then you answer it. The first one is, uh, <clears throat> as evaluator, if I am participating in an application uh, as part of CAPS, but it's on B, can I be evaluator of A or So I'm particularly strict on that. So I've seen the list, so, I'm, I mean, there's three of us, there's three POs, and I'm the strictest of the three. <laughs> so the reason is that I do not want to put anybody in a conflict of interest. When I started, you know, I couldn't have Italian projects because they were, you're Italian, yeah, but I lived in the States, so it doesn't matter. You are seen to be an Italian, and if you have all Italian projects, you are seen so being seen is as important as, as having or not. So we would like to have people who are experienced evaluators because they're a lot faster and probably better in their judgment. Unfortunately, uh, Jesus, my head of unit, said, no, we want mostly new people and half women or 40 or whatever, which is harder to, to get. Huh? So we have a lot of evaluators which are new people not people who know and are known. I think that's good. It means it takes more time. So in the past, we had such large, you know, we would put the people in room A and then start one week earlier, the people in room B, not to have people from A and B meet. But it's really difficult. Not only that, but, uh, you know, to remember my list of conflict of interest saying, now we're going to discuss this proposal. Could these people please step out of the room and then you have to get them back? It's a lot of effort. So I would prefer to just, you know, throw it in the air to newcomers um, than having, you know, because the people already in this community of 12 projects, which are described in that document, Chances are they've had two, one or two years to meet one another, meet the commission. So these people have an advantage over the others. Okay? They also have a good vision of what CAPS is and what CAPS is not. So my personal uh, idea is no, I would avoid conflict of interest. But you know, sometimes somebody gets in, you, you never know. So what happens is if you're reading at home a proposal, all of a sudden, you see your best friend, somebody else for which you feel well, my judgment is impaired. You write back to the commission and say, I have a conflict of interest, which I was not aware of, and do you return it and they assign to somebody else. As far when you're reading at home and evaluating at, at home, it's okay. What's not good is the later stage, when you're in, in a panel during the week of evaluation in end of, end of, end of, end of June. End of June, we will meet in person. All of May, they will be reading at home. So reading at home means we trust people not to, uh, you know, chat. In the past, it was like a high school. I would supervise, make sure nobody's cheating, right? But now it's all based on trust. My, my second question is on the requirements of the license. If there is a that the platform should be free software, if the data generated should be open data, if the research should be published in open access, open access, yes, if there is explicit requirements in this direction, or if it's something that's explicit, but what would it So that's a very hard question, okay? Because many parts of the call, you know, I've, I've worked in, in all, all over the age 2020. So CAPS states open source, open hardware. So, Creative Commons license. 
And many people have come to me and said, look, we'd like to do a proposal, but are you open? And I said, yes. Well, that's what we thought, so we go away. So we lose some, we gain some. This, this one is, really is particularly uh, attentive. Why? If it's going to be used for social innovation, for non-profit, for communities, you really don't want to tie them in to big contracts with, with the, the major. So on the other hand, you don't want to rob people of their ideas, so you do want a Creative Commons uh, license. So I would say that this part of the program, it is, and unfortunately that has meant a lot of people go elsewhere. It's okay. We like, you know, personally, I like patents. I respect people who, you know, in big companies, Lucent, whatever. But then there's other areas of the program where, where it's much more uh, emphasized. And the third question is on the uh, is there a requirement for the department from East Europe, or that's some? It's good. It's good, but it's it's really good. <laughs> It's so good, I mean, it's very good because uh, when I look at the statistics on the first CAPS call, I say, what did we do wrong? We have a lot of countries that are overrepresented and some that are underrepresented. Now, Eastern Europe was always underrepresented. However, Poles working at Fraunhofer or Russians working at, you know, people travel. So, but as it happens, you know, we say, yes, member states is what we, and it's encouraged to have uh, um, organizations in Eastern Europe. Why should everybody leave and go, you know, Silicon Valley or whatever? The, the research program is to develop research in Europe. So the, the first announcement of the call was in Vilnius. You know why? It, it, exactly because we wanted these Eastern European with a new outlook, which with good ideas that we weren't exposed to before. And you could have partners from anywhere. In fact, I mean, if you want to be, if you get, uh, if you get Israel or uh, Switzerland or Norway, you get a lot of money free because it's, it, it contributes to our budget, but not from the EU. So that's these are like good free partners. Or no, we are really open. Anybody who who has a who, who can really contribute on a case by case. So often we get Americans, we have Americans in CAPS. That's kind of hard to justify, but they say, oh no, but we want to work here, we want here, we, li you know, we like it here, okay. So then, uh, you know, the Treaty of uh, Rome says you have to be established in the EU. And you pay taxes and you hire people and you continue maintaining research there. So that's for me a priority. But that's not my decision, it's the management committee who decides on a case-by-case case for international partners from third countries. There's a whole category of countries. Uh, I have a partner with Lebanon, for example. No problem. It's, it's good. It's actually a very good thing to have engagement of international partners. And my last question is on agenda. How, how do you assess the proposal favor the like on the base of the coordinator, the partners, uh, IPs, or...? So I, I wish that were a criteria, but it never is. <coughs> so I'm the gender uh, equal opportunity person for my whole DG, and I go to meetings and I'm, I'm the only female one. There, so things don't change that easily. So no, but, but if you go to the CAPS consultation meetings, you'll realize there's a lot more uh, women uh, in the room than there are in fireware. Okay, or in physics, I mean, physics is a field. Uh, so when you have multidisciplinary, often you change the gender balance. But gender is not, you know, I've had great proposals, all women, I was hoping they'd make it up, but no, nobody thought of using that as a criteria. The criteria they use in the last moment to rank proposals one against the other is do they have SMEs? Uh, you know, do they have covered? They're, they're different criteria. That has never been to my to my knowledge. In fact, last year uh, the caps went in as an entry for the first program to have as many women evaluators as men. It was a complete unusual. Now, if you have biotechnologies, you, you know, biology tends to get so it depends on the field. But uh, in engineering, there's two countries that have more 
female PhDs than males. And uh, so I don't see why you can't get uh, gender. Uh, but although it's a, an age 2020 policy, it's never been used against something. Nor, unfortunately, favorably. Please present yourself. Hi, I'm Panos from Expert System Company. Uh, are there any standard uh, impact measures that should be used in the pilot projects, either from previous projects or any any other source? Yes, yes, there are. So if you got a copy of that little leaflet, I think you, you were in the front rows. So, so there it describes YASI, Impact Assessment for Social Innovation. Um, and if you go on the website, you will see they have a whole map of type of impacts. So this project was funded as a CA uh, in the first, um, in the first uh, call. This is the second call. You can definitely use that methodology. If that works for you, if it doesn't and you want to use another one that you think is better, you can. But yes, that one got top ratings uh, as being very useful for this group of projects. I know. Uh, yes, stand up or yes. get a mic. Uh, yes, I didn't present myself last time. I'm Elaine from uh, the Free Knowledge Institute. Uh, you talked about a sp uh, evaluation score scorecard, or did I not listen? Uh, is it something that we can find? Because I've heard people had lists for, for Horizon 2020, but the caps is so different in the criteria that uh, I was wondering if there was anything specific to the caps. No, no unfortunately everybody thinks they're different so they try to play with the thresholds and that. So unfortunately or fortunately, so they decided to standardize in the sixth framework, this is the eighth. Huh? So the form is the same for everybody and uh, you know it's, it's scores, I think I had a, there's a full presentation of slides under collective awareness where it explains what a three is, what a four is, what a five is. As it happened, uh, you know, humans are human and they will not follow the form. So if people want to play around with these, they will put things with, where they don't belong, you know. They'll put things in impact. Every, every time there's some, uh, I learn something from these clever evaluators who use our forms to do what they want. But yes, now the forms are identical, and and part of it is you know, so you have to have over three. Three is good. Good is not good enough because there we are always oversubscribed. So we tend to get uh, now. What you play with is the A, B, C, and D. So there's a bit of money, 24 million reserved for A. There's only six for uh, the digital social platform. So you can play around with those for courts, say, like tennis courts. And then if we don't reach the budget in one, we can move around after the evaluation, the commission does what it called the, 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 the commission proposal. Um, and the member states don't want us to fiddle with anything. Huh? So chances are, whatever the evaluation says, we transcribe in our proposal, but sometimes we say, look, there's a clever thing to be done by doing this, this, and this, and sometimes we take the risk of defending that. I hope that uh, the answer, the form is the same. What I tell beginners, I say, look, take that evaluation form, print it, and once you've written the proposal in your group, take the form and say, you know, why would we get excellent on A, B, and C, and write down those sentences, not, you know, in English, sentences. Why? Because your proposal is meant to convince the readers to write those words in those place. So it actually helps you a lot. Okay? So for me, for example, you know, I have two lines. My, my two line summary, because people don't know what CAPS is. So it took me some time and I came up with two lines how I think CAPS is. If you ask Fabrizio, he has a different. 
But that exercise of summarizing in the minimum is actually very good because then you understand what's unique about your proposal. Because once people have a hundred proposals or, to deal with, to have one that has something unique really makes it top among a lot of good ones. So that's a, that's, I, that's a suggestion that has worked for me. How do I convince my three readers that my impact is going to be A, B, and C? And do I do it with a diagram? Do I do it with a letter of intent? Do I do, you know, how it is? But first you do the research and then you do the, the summarization of it at the last moment. Hi, I'm Enrique uh, from Goteo's uh, crowdfunding platform, an open source crowdfunding platform. We are working with other partners uh, in a proposal. With the uh, one important part of, of this proposal has to do with match funding. So there's going to be a specific pilot with the philosophy of chess. We will try to, to make sure that there's a good uh, uh, community effort to select and to make sure that uh, those projects uh, are getting uh, resources you know, to, to, to happen. You know? and, and it makes it a little bit more complex when it comes uh, to uh, addressing well, the, the, the money issue. You know? uh, I'm wondering if there's any changes in the financing mechanisms or the way uh, these resources can be uh, channeled through these organizations because it's slightly different from having a specific budget for you know uh, tasks or resources from different partners than having a, an amount of money who's going to be channeled through this proposal to specific communities and, and it makes it slightly more complex to, to administer and, and when the money comes you know in terms also of calendar so my question is uh, specific about this uh, issue. So this is a very good question, a very complicated issue, because it's not what's written on the paper. It's the amount of effort it goes to simplify things from your side. See, the Commission doesn't care, because we have our rules, and you know, you submit, and if it's in our rules, we give you the money, and if not, we say no. But, but you're very, this is a very innovative crowdfunding, crowdsourcing, and cascading funding article. It's a new article in the contract. So we learned. So Chest was the very first to do it. And, and you know, there's emails to me. It, it's a nightmare because they have to give out money before they actually cover it from the commission. And you know, either you get all the students and the you know whoever had the idea to sign a contract with us or else they're subcontractors. If they're subcontractors, then you are responsible. So you take on a lot of responsibility. We shouldn't exaggerate this because any SME takes on a great amount of risk. And you know, the commission has always been really nice about paying, you know, we don't leave with the cash and uh, disappear or anything. So it's not that bad, but I would ask the, you know, get together with the ones, uh, the 16 accelerators, for example. Fiware has a, a huge program. And they have started almost one year later than Jess. So they still don't know at cost claim what's going to happen. So you only know once the cost claims have been filed and once the five years are over and the audit, because everybody has their own role. So we, we are learning. I'm learning. Uh, it's not easy because you know we're doing something innovative. Um, we're not uh, Hollywood uh, financiers who do all sorts of you know creative accounting. But it's a difficult question, and the the good thing is that if you go to the meetings with the accelerators, once there's a good tip, it immediately goes. Collective awareness works really well when it's uh, facilitating uh, the exchange of money and the proper accounting for it. So write the text to the best of your advantage. Know that if it gets through, the commission is allowed to change a bit, to simplify, you know, once you sign the, the, contract, uh, the, the contract, but it's not the contract, it's the consortium agreement that makes sure that the organization's willing to bear the initial part of the, the advancing the money. I hope that that's, you know, the best I can answer. Well, that's one, the, the one you mentioned right that's one of the formulas we're thinking about. So, okay. considering these different partners, uh, it's uh, also an issue of liquidity and, and, and those needles. No? That's, yeah. that's I, I'm going to say that you're learning a lot because crowdsourcing, crowdfunding, 
with small project research amounts is actually you're learning something that uh, that is really going to be a big major source of change in, in the world economy. Huh? It's changing. So I think here you learn the mechanisms. Any more questions? So we have to call them Emma 1, Emma 2, you know, now we have numbers, but yeah. People do not like to see resubmissions. Now, if you're new and you see it for the first time, you're very happy, but if you've seen the same people, you know, across, then you get very upset. The other thing that upsets evaluators is a long text and repetition. Uh, and what they like is they like to be able to fill that, you know, those three questions quickly. So if you make it easy for them, you know, they, they are very happy to have the Reader's Digest and, you know, reproduce. Some of them are very clever and they will not be, uh, you know, uh, it's a game. It's a game that uh, one, one evaluator came to me and uh, she said, uh, Irish actor again, she said, do you realize this in Limerick uh, submitted uh, 14? And I said, well, you know, we don't limit. And she said, oh, but they only have like four people. <laughs> How could they possibly? I said, well, you know, they're playing the lottery. If they get one, then they get their three people. So some people know uh, what happens in Ireland, what happens in Greece, but the average evaluator doesn't know more than their own uh, home country, and maybe one or two. So you're playing with this. Now, that's the good thing about EU programs, because, you know, if you always get the... Uh, Delft, MIT, Stanford, and I don't know who else, they're always going to get all the money. Whereas in the EU programs, you might have the University of blah, 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 I don't know where, and they have an equal chance with everybody else. You know, that's the advantage. Any more questions? Okay, so uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Loretta. And uh, now we will uh, have a coffee break, and then we will uh, come back with uh, a panel of uh, presentation of CAPS projects that have been already funded, or, uh, or, or, or other type of projects that have been uh, funded by the European Union and also local uh, 